Adol thinks to himself, he has already lost to that sorcerer twice and had to retreat. What could he be doing better? Well, he decided to practice for a few moments, get his mind in the moment, make sure that he was as strong as possible, and he did so on the monsters nearby until he believed that he was ready to take them on. This time, he made sure to have the hailing potion at ready, which he failed to drink in time in the last battle. And so he proceeded for the third time into the depths of the shrine. And he proceeded to fight the mysterious sorcerer in his magic circle. The power flames at his command. His first strike is true. His second trite is true. And his third strike kills him. His skill. The third time wins. And as it happens, the walls begin to explode with light. Bricks, stone, and debris scatter across the floor, both disrupting the magic circle and showing an entryway that he had not seen before. Perhaps he should descend see what could be down there. Perhaps that black cloaked man he had heard about, the mysterious bandit, or something that Jebba said about being down here. What could it be? He descends. He sees two statues. The place is dark. Horned creatures, floating skeletons and backbones. That's what he just saw. He struck it down before he had the chance to be too frightened with it. He searches through the corridors and sees another of the horned beasts, the horned skeletons, like a minotaur, or something similar. He continues. Seems like some, some darkness prevents his stamina from recovering. He's being drained. This is not good. Not good at all. He finds a cell with a locked door. It is not empty. What could be inside? He slices through another of the creatures. Another cell. Two of them, side by side. What could be inside, Adol cannot tell. But he continues to explore the maze of rooms and corridors. The dank smell of old ruins. A spider comes nearby, but fortunately Adol is prepared and strikes through. Finds himself a chest, but it is locked. And he, cannot, he does not have means of which to open it. He continues, hoping to find some more. More spiders. Not what he was looking for. He quickly cuts it down and continues. He finds another staircase that goes down even deeper, but he has yet to finish exploring the area, so he wants to make sure he understands that this place is fully explored. 
and having done so, decides that yes, he can descend. Another spider blocks his path, but is able to dispatch it quite easily. Takes two slices to get through that one. But he finds a key, perhaps one that can open the doors and the chests. He cuts through two ambushing skulls that seem to be lit with blue flame as it crawls along the ground like a skittering centipede. Decides to return up the stairs to test his theory, for he had found a key that he had not expected to. He uses the key, seeing if it can fit in through the doors. And it works. He's able to get in. But of course what awaits him is not something but just a skeleton crawling on the ground. He quickly cuts it down, searches the room, and realizes that it is empty. He makes his way to the next room. Opens it up. And inside, he finds a young girl. She asks who he is. Adil introduces himself and explains his reason for coming to the shrine, that he was told by a fortune teller to talk to the old lady Jabba from Zebik village who instructed him to come here. She introduces herself as Fina, and also mentions a man in the black cape, sounding vaguely familiar to Adil, and then he points and perhaps thinks that perhaps it's the mysterious bandit that stole everything from several villagers before, as well as the silver bell. She implores that we leave, but how can we leave her behind? Let's take her with us. She thanks us, and we swear that we will lead her to a safe place. As Adol searches the chest nearby, he finds a mask. Fina explains to him that the mask was put there. He decides to take a closer look. It is a very strange mask with inset jade. Perhaps it could be revealing in some fashion. takes the brunt of the attacks, knowing full well that perhaps he is injuring himself in protection, but for the sake of it, he does so, as he can, continues to, to lead her out. They make it to the upper shrine. Adol doesn't remember there being any monsters nearby, but just in case, he continues to lead her. They walk together through the upper levels. Without the monsters, it's a little easier.
Perhaps he can make it back to Sebek Village. Even if it doesn't have the Silver Bell, it might still be safer. He touches the golden statue, and, and they both teleport out. He continues to lead her, making sure that none of the monsters touch her as he leads her down south, towards the village. We're almost there, Adol tells her. We're going to make it. As they step across the threshold into the village, the girl collapses. Tired from the ordeal, she must not have been walking or exercising all the time she was imprisoned. She explains that she's alright, and that she is just tired. But she lapses into a consciousness. We feel her to check her life signs, and it seems that she has a fever. Fortunately, Jabba's house is close by, and we take her there. After making sure that she was comfortably in bed, Adol addresses Jebba. Jebba explains that she has given her medicine and that it should help her rest for the night. That she should be fine by the morning. A strange story, indeed. A sacred inner sanctum, sealed under the shrine. The conversation goes on. Adol describes what he has encountered. The monsters, the prison cages, the sorcerer himself. And the girl and the mysterious bandit with a black cape. Hmm. Adol wonders how far down the shrine can go. And he decides perhaps he should be a little better equipped than he is now. Perhaps getting both the armor and the shield. It should not take long to, to raise the money from the monsters, who seem to drop gold quite readily. And so he prepares to make the final money he needs in order to make the purchases for further protection. Skills are improving dramatically. He believes that he has amassed sufficient funds in order to afford what he needs back in the town of Menea. And so he bids farewell to some of the villagers as he makes his way back there in order to get further equipment that he may need as he plans to go further down into the depths of the shrine. Mm. The journey is uneventful. Nothing of interest happens. For other monsters, they seem to be always in numbers these days. But fortunately, A Adol seems quite skilled to be able to cut them down with great ease. He's no longer tired from the ordeals.
making sure to greet the child before he makes his way over to the armory. He goes to first D well, he goes to Dios, so that he may buy purchase equipment from him. The plate mail. He asks about the reflex mail, but it proves to be even more expensive. And asks also about the large shield, but decides um, that he would settle for the shield once he raises the final amount of money that he'll need. The plate mail fits snugly onto Adel's body. He begins to feel like a true warrior with this equipment. And with this equipment he has further resources, further options, further protection against the monsters in the shrine. It takes a few moments to get the final amount of money that he needs. to equip it in order to increase its defenses further. And with that, he feels it, and along with the potion that he purchased from the clinic, he feels prepared to make the journey. And so that he does.